This is a very we, we, we belong to very ancient tradition. Okay, this is simultaneous translation. And well the foundation is in the scriptures like Srimad Bhagavatam, who was compiled five thousand years ago. <clears throat> in the Srimad Bhagavatam, the Srimad Bhagavatam is dedicated to glorifying the Supreme Personality of Godhead, the Supreme Godhead, the cause of all causes. <clears throat> in the Bhagavatam, we you know there's the sages and Ivish around you, they're sitting in the forest, or they in the forest, they're making sacrifices. They are not very, this is 5,000 years ago. <clears throat> they make sacrifice, fire is sacrifice for the sake of the benefit of the human society in this dark age of Kali, the iron, the iron age, we can call it the industrial age. <laughs> so I say, now we go further back than 200 years in time. <clears throat> so they were, they wanted to do good to people, to the people in general upliftment, so their method is sacrifice, making some spiritual practice, but they found it was not very successful. So then they choose, they, or they, they choose to hear the Bhagavatam, or the story, <coughs> about the Supreme, per Supreme Lord, the Supreme Personality of God and Krishna. <clears throat> so that, is, that became, so say, the Bhagavatam, the, the, what they heard there. And in that, there is many stories in this story. Stories or narrations of happenings. And at the early stage in the Bhagavatam, in the first, in the Bhagavatam, as you know, most is 12, 12 books, 12 sections. <clears throat> so in the first section, it begins some 5,000 years ago. One part of it is how there is a cow. And she's speaking with a bull. <laughs> of course, cows and bulls can speak with each other, no problem. <laughs> When the cow was not happy, she was crying, and the bull was limping on one leg. So they, they had the conversation, and it was clear that actually this cow was a representation, or represent, well, we could say, was a representation of Mother Earth. Mother Earth had taken the shape of a cow to lament about the situation in which she was, <clears throat> so we can say, say in a little bit similar, Mother Earth maybe is lamenting nowadays as well. And then this bull, he was actually um, represent, a representation, he was uh, the bull of Dharma, the bull of religiosity of, uh, of Dharma. 
And he used to walk on four legs. That's usually what we expect to, for cows and bulls to do. But he was, he, don't ask me how, but he was limping around on one leg. <laughs> okay, so the bull of Dharma usually goes on four legs, represented by meaning, truthfulness, austerity, mercy, and cleanliness. So these four qualities is the foundation for dharma, good dharma, or for religion. As time goes on, that's how dharma, how true spiritual life, you can say, is, yeah, yeah, flourishes by these qualities. But as time goes on, we know that time and tide waits for no one. It, 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 Time, with time, things deteriorate. So gradually, one leg after the other is disappearing. Austerity, cleanliness, mercy. And then it's said that nowadays, in this age, in this industrial age, the age of Kali, the final leg is truthfulness. If there's any spiritual life or religious life, it's, it's hanging on that truthfulness. <clears throat> okay, the, the bull was asking the cow, what's, what's the problem? <laughs> and then he tried to find out, is it because of this or that? But then finally they came to the conclusion that what really um, was sad for her was that, that Krishna had left the planet, <laughs> the Supreme Lord. Or maybe the whole other things you can suffer the separation or pain, but this pain with separation from Krishna is our ultimate problem. At that time there came a king, Parikshit, who was prominent, he's a prominent figure in the Bhagavatam. And he is a little bit different, that he, he, he uh, the Kambul of being mistreated by uh, someone who was dressed up as a king, as a leader, but who wasn't actually qualified. I mean, that's our modern politicians who, with their politics, do harm to human society and to the earth. <clears throat> so then, uh, the, the, this righteous king, the good king, there's good kings, there may be bad kings, but this is, a king is meant to be good, okay? <laughs> and if the king is not really good, it's not really a king, okay? Uh, <clears throat> but he comes and asks, who, who are you? And why, why are you? Who has done this to you? Because they were mistreated. Uh, so he actually started to speak with the cow, and the, specifically the bull. <laughs> and the bull answers. And this is a very, the bull of Dharma, the bull of religion, is a very philosophical bull. <laughs> so it's, well, hard to say. Is it karma? Is it destiny? Is it time? Who can say why this happens? <clears throat> then the king understood, aha, this is, this is a bull of dharma. Can first of all, interesting, they could speak with each other, okay? <laughs> they, were not, they were in communication, okay? So we can say, the Bhagavatam starts, uh, at least part of the beginning is the cow and the bull there at that point. <clears throat> then there is all these books, parts, first book, second book, the third book, <clears throat> describing the creation of the universe, describing the continuation, describing different dynasties, describing the, the cosmic, the, the <laughs> giving a picture of cosmos, <laughs> and the planetary systems. Of course, it doesn't maybe f fit with our concept nowadays, how they describe it there, but <laughs> it was a given a D. <clears throat> the, the point with a D was not necessarily to give exact geographically explanation, but rather giving a guidelines for how to get back to the spiritual, spiritual world. <clears throat> when we come to the ninth book, 
at the end. <clears throat> then we, we almost end up in the time when the Bhagavatam starts. As it describes Lord Krishna and, ba and his brother Balaram's birth and uh, appearance. <clears throat> <clears throat> so Krishna, he appears, he is the son of Vasudeva and Devaki, and his brother Balaram is related also there. Uh, but then it's a description again. Again, we have the Mother Earth coming there, <laughs> making her presence felt in the pages of the Bhagavatam in the form of a cow. <laughs> So it tends to be, and there's also another in the fourth canto place where Mother Earth takes the shape of a cow. So when Earth is in difficulty or <laughs> she wants to communicate, she takes that shape of a cow. <clears throat> and she, she finds the situation unbearable on the Earth. Okay, we, so she needs help. But what does she do? She doesn't go and ask the people to make a revolution. <laughs> what, what can these human beings do <laughs> from a cosmic point of view? <laughs> you know, it's so small. We smell like some small ants walking around here on the earth, and depending on what, you know, we look at an ant here, and, and then they're looking from a different dimension, they're looking at the earth. What these billions of of human beings walking around here, driving the cars and doing all things. So we're going to go out and demonstrate, you know, save Earth. <laughs> we we're very small, we we're very small. So the Earth at that time, in the form of a cow, she didn't turn to the human beings. We, she turned to the divine beings of the universe. Those who actually has power in the universe. So she went to Lord Brahma the creator, the secondary creator of the universe, with his four heads, one head for each direction. <laughs> he has to keep control of everything. <clears throat> but he says, and then there's the other devas there, including Lord Shiva, what to do. <laughs> so they, they decide to go and see Lord Vishnu. Who is in, okay, and he, on, on, his, on his planet, in his island, in the ocean of milk, however that looks like. For me, the ocean of milk looks like the polar, polar ocean. <laughs> it's all ice, <laughs> maybe snow, and then the sun is shining, and then it's very white, <laughs> a white ocean. And again, it says that it's, it's somewhere in north. <laughs> where Lord Vishnu is staying in po the pole store. So they came there, they went in procession with the cow, Mother Earth as a cow, Lord Brahma and Lord Shiva, and Lord Brahma sat down to communicate with Lord Vishnu, he sat down in meditation on the beach of the milk ocean. And then in his meditation he received information <clears throat> so he said, the Lord Vishnu says, yes, I'm already aware of the situation on the earthly planet, on the earthly level, um, and I'm going to take, I'm going to make my appearance in the Yadu dynasty and as Krishna. And you Devas, you should also come. Um, you should also incarnate on the planet Earth in the Yadu dynasty. Please do that to support me in my pastime and in my mission to <laughs> re-establish proper order in the human society. Re-establish proper order, uh, annihilate, take away that what is bad and establish what's good. <clears throat> so then Krishna takes makes his appearance, takes his birth, in, and that he does dramatically, as we know, 
in a prison house, or he, at least his parents are imprisoned. <clears throat> and the demonic king, Kamsha, is actually, he, he has heard the rumor that the divine voice has told him that, um, Okay, his death is born. Will, will take birth. In any case, this Krishna, he will be the cause of his death. <laughs> so he's trying to kill. He's trying to stop his death, but killing that, what supposedly will be the cause of his death. They're trying to kill that. He's trying to kill death. <laughs> Krishna is a death, <laughs> ultimately. Ultimately, we all have to surrender to the Supreme. <laughs> and finally comes as death. But of course, for the devotees, death is not death. That is life. This is going on. It's opening the door to the next life, to the next dimension, the spiritual dimension. But if you don't believe in that, then death is something scary. And of course, if you don't prepare for that, <laughs> if I... If I if I rob and steal and like that, and there comes the police and knocks on my door, you know, then you <laughs> you, you think oh, they're going to catch me now because <laughs> you know what you have done. But if you have an honest citizen and police is knocking on the door, you know, you can say, okay, what what's going on? What can I help you with? It's not a cause of anxiety in that way, at least. So in a similar way, we can say a time of death. If we lived a good life, proper way, we have nothing to worry about. But if we haven't done that, but lived a sinful, violent, and deceitful, uh, cheating life, yeah, then we will be anxiety. We will want to avoid, avoid the unavoidable. So Krishna takes his birth, and then he's okay. That's the part. He, he's moved to, he's hidden <laughs> away from this evil king in a, in a, in Gokul, <clears throat> the village of cows, where there's Nanda and Yasoda, and there Krishna is. He can, can say smuggled. He's transferred there to grow up in disguise as a cowherd boy. <laughs> so thus we're getting the 10th book of the Bhagavatam, starting where Krishna is with the coward men and coward women in Gokul and then in Vrindavan. And there, so this is our, our worshipful Lord, Sri Krishna, the Supreme Personality of Godhead. He grows up as a coward amongst coward men, coward women, and as a coward boy himself. And he, he lives, <clears throat> he, he has the best of childhood. <laughs> he doesn't have to go to school. <laughs> the schooling is the parents send out the kids with the calves to take care of them. And then later on, when the kids grow a little bit bigger, they go out with the cows. And while they, they do the important work of herding and protecting the cows and calves and everything, they have a good time playing in the forests and learning all kinds of things and learning all the secrets of the forest, in a way. <clears throat> so in that way, Krishna he is mostly well, I guess he is. You know, he is with the gopis, okay? We, do we have any? Well, that's Lord Chaitanya, okay? <laughs> we don't have Krishna with a cow here. <laughs> okay, with Krishna, m very much of the time is depicted along with the cows. So that, is, that is how he is known. Yeah. And for Lord Vishnu, Lord Krishna, the cows are very important. There's one verse. <clears throat> Let's get it right here. Namo Brahmanaya Devaya, Go Brahmana Hitai Chatadakitai Krishnaya, Go Vindaya Namo Namaha. Let me offer my respectful obeisances unto Lord Krishna, who is a worshipful, worshipable deity for all Brahmanical men who is a well-wisher of cows 
and brahmanas, and is always benefiting the whole world. I offer my repeated obeisances to the personality of Godhead, known as Krishna and Govinda. So he, the cows are very dear to Krishna, the Supreme Lord. And that's quite interesting. Why, why, why is that? Um, but uh, that, is, that is how the creation is, actually. <clears throat> Even today, okay, so the, vegan, the vegan movement is there. <laughs> and that is actually out of a concern for the cows. <laughs> It's not as a reaction of the, I hope, not a reaction of the cows, but a concern for the cows, amongst others. Uh, so yes, yeah, so we, are, we are concerned for the cows. We can say, in a, way, in a way, say, how we treat the cows is how we treat the earth. And maybe in one sense, each other also. So there, <coughs> there's all these cows. <laughs> I was just now learning um, that according to Ayurveda, well, first of all, cows. We're not meant to keep cows as we keep them nowadays. You know, in the old times, here in Slovenia, it was not a long time ago, what, not a long time, 100 years ago, the situation was so much different. Uh, even maybe 50 years ago. <laughs> I mean, each year that goes now, things here, yeah, each 10 years goes. And in, uh, in Sweden, and I guess every, every day basically continuously uh, farms are closing down. Okay, so the, um, okay, cows are not meant to live. <laughs> the life they live of today in the industrial life, but they were living, each family in the countryside had their cow and cows. And then I just now learned that the cows has four with a tit, whatever you the milk from. <laughs> Let's see now if I remember. <laughs> I was just now told. <clears throat> Ayurveda, you know about Ayurveda, most of you. <laughs> they, they say that the, the cows four tits. The first one is meant for the deities in the house. <laughs> the milk you get from the first tit. Um, let's see. I'll get it right. One is for the family. So, I'm sorry. Um, which was in a family. What? Neighbors. No, it wasn't. Even na the neighbors also have cows. Okay, no problem. <laughs> Everyone has a cow. <laughs> okay, one is for the calf. Okay, one is for the calf. The, 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 for the deities, for the calf, for the family milk. And then is one, the, the, the last one is for making some produce, some cheese or butter and things like that. <laughs> so you can also some to trade with a little bit. The, the fourth part you can like make a little bit business with like that, yes. <laughs> <clears throat> so that's the description. That, that's how it's meant to be. That's why there's four tits <laughs> on, the, on the cow. <clears throat> so Krishna, he is there with the cows. But then we, 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 we speak about the cows, but the cows is, we become, that is the influence of this industrial age. <laughs> we, become se we become separated from everything. We become separated from the cows from the earth, from each other, from the family. And then in Sweden, they have, you know, they have singular families, no, that's <laughs> like a nuclear, they call them nuclear families. Just one, there's a mother or, <laughs> I don't know, father, how it works, but that is going to say, everything is like separated. I always say, se um, united we stand, separated we fall. <laughs> so that way, everything falls. <clears throat> okay, Krishna was. Um, then another thing that comes up. So Krishna was in the f the cows were walking in the forests. And of course, that is also the forest. So there was not a modern forest with the spruce standing, you know, in straight lines and whatever. It was a natural forest. 
and there's different kind of trees with different kind of leaves and herbs and everything the cows could go and grass. So the cows became very healthy the, and by drinking the cow, the milk from this very healthy cow in a very healthy environment, you also become healthy. <coughs> this milk is not just milk, it will depend on which cow from where, what, what qualities is the earth and everything. All this is being destroyed nowadays. Okay, so the trees, so the walking amongst the trees. So there is uh, in the Bhagavatam, and I thought fits any of the, we have the, the trees in the Bhagavatam. <laughs> Maybe it's not so many trees, but in, in the Krishna's time there was trees. In Vrindavan, when you come to Vrindavan, the forest of Vrinda, uh, <laughs> where is the forest? <laughs> They all cut down. There is the empty fields. Well, <laughs> hopefully it's fields and not skyscrapers. <laughs> what do you find there? Uh, so where are the trees? But at Krishna's time, it was uh, trees everywhere. <laughs> and Krishna says at the at the Govardhan Lila, when he is speaking with his father to convince his father to worship Govardhan Hill. <clears throat> then I like Krishna and there's a state there's one verse he says the final statement is like this you know we are not living in the towns we are not living in the cities we are not living in what did he say town cities we are not even living in, we're not living in the villages either we are living in the forests and on the hills <laughs> Therefore, we should worship Govardhan Hill. <laughs> so that was uh, that, that indication they were very closely related to the forests and the hills. So there is a tree, the forest, the trees. <clears throat> so there's one past time Krishna is out playing, uh, herding the cows. It's early morning, and there's a past time of Krishna stealing the clothes from the gopis, from the young girls who is worshipping Katyayani to get Krishna as her <laughs> husband. They all wanted to have Krishna as her husband, so they were worshipping Katyayani sometime during Kartik. And Krishna knew this and he played some trick on, her, on, on them by stealing the clothes while they were taking the sh bath and whatever. In any case, that pastime went on and the girls got the cloth back and they were very happy and remembering Krishna. And Krishna with his cowed friends and cows, they were, went on in the forest there. And it says, sometime later, Lord Krishna, the son of Devaki, surrounded by his coward friends and accompanied by his elder brother Balaram, went a good distance away from Vrindavan, herding the cows. Then the sun's heat became intense. The, the, the past time before that happened in the morning, and now it's become midday. <laughs> The sun seed became intense. Lord Krishna saw that the trees were acting the trees were acting as umbre umbrellas by shading him. And thus he spoke as follows to his boyfriends. Lord Krishna said, O Stoka, Krishna and Amsu, O Sridam, Subal and Arjun, O Vrishaba, Ojasvi, Deva Prasta and Vadutapa. These are different names of the, his friends. Just see these greatly fortunate trees whose lives are completely dedicated to the benefit of others. Even while tolerating the wind, rain, heat, and snow, snow even snow mentioned here, they protect us from these elements. Just see how these trees are maintaining every living entity their birth is successful. Their behavior is just like that of great personalities. For anyone who asks any 
for anyone who asks anything from a tree never goes away disappointed. These trees fulfill one's desires with the leaves, flowers, and fruits. The shade, their shade, roots, bark, and wood, uh, and also with the fragrance, sap, ashes, pulp, and shoots. <laughs> so it's all different kind of things you get from the trees, can get from the trees. It is the duty of every living being to perform welfare activities for the benefit of others with his life, wealth, intelligence, and words. Thus moving among the trees whose branches were bent low by the abundance of twigs, fruits, flowers, and leaves, Lord Krishna came to the Yamuna River. Okay, so that's a little bit uh, the description of the trees, the fortunate trees. Of course, we can say Vrindavan, but gives a picture of the trees. We, there's something to, to look up to, respect, and uh, take lessons from. <clears throat> so we are devotees. And now we're living in towns. <laughs> we're not living in the forest, in the hills. We're not even living in the villages. <laughs> so much, <laughs> maybe something. We're living in the towns. And here we are trying to be good devotees in the towns. Of course, we can, we can make a sacrifice. And you're making a sacrifice. We're making a combined sacrifice today for the benefit of the world. And that we're coming together to hear about Krishna, to hear about spiritual matters. We come together to hear. I try to speak, or someone speaks, and others listen. And this is a sacrifice. This is an act of, and this is a spiritual act. We can say, in order to purify our own consciousness, and that way also affect the total consciousness of this planet Earth, the total consciousness of, of the human society. <coughs> Uh, and we're chanting Hare Krishna <laughs> on our beats, <laughs> on our japa beats. You, you, you don't know, can later learn how to meditate on the prayer beats. And then, then there's this one prayer. Well, that is easy. I have, <laughs> I have to use my external enemy. No, not the enemy. <laughs> uh, memory. <laughs> Maybe this is our our enemy. <laughs> it makes us uh, okay. That was too deep. It makes us makes us lazy to rem remember. And that is in the Shikshastaka. Trinad api sunichano, torod api sahishnano, amani na manodina kitaniya sada hari. So uh, once you chant the holy name of the Lord in a humble state of mind. Thinking oneself lower than the straw in the street, one should be more tolerant than a tr more tolerant than a tree, devoid of all sense of false prestige, and should be ready to offer all respects to others. In such a state of mind, one can chant the holy name of the Lord constantly. So there we have a Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's instruction. <laughs> how to be successful in chanting, and the example of the tree is there. Tolerant like a tree. Yes, it's too hot, and it's uh, too, too much taxes, and it's too much, too difficult in the job, specifically in this industrial, industrialized age, and there's all personal conflicts and everything. We have to practice patience, tolerance, and um, stay humbly. These things of this world are not so important as we think. Important is that we develop our Krishna consciousness, God consciousness, our spiritual consciousness, and thus make our life successful. And go back to the spiritual world where we actually belong. We learned this morning that we actually we are, we are like fish out of water. And the, whatever you give the fish, <laughs> out of the water, <laughs> he will not be happy. You have to put it back into the water. So we also need to, as spirit souls, to go back into the ocean of spiritual, spiritual life, spiritual bliss. 
and that our simple process is to chant Hare Krishna and study the Bhagavatam and hear the stories of Krishna and meditate on those stories and the, the stories and instructions on so, so many different levels. Okay, Hare Krishna. Hare. Uh, two minutes left. <laughs> if there's a question or comment. <clears throat> Okay. <laughs> then we maybe then we end here. <laughs> Thank you, Hare Krishna. Sir Prabhupada ki jai. Okay. <laughs> Krishna. Nigo Svitos Vita Krishna Swami ki jai. Thank you, Maharaj, for telling us through Srimad Bhagavatam what is the meaning of life or how to be successful, to be humble, uh, to be tolerant, patient in a humble mood. This is success in, a, in our life. Thank you. Tako, dragi bhakte, gostje, zdaj pa naslednja točka programa in sicer ples pred božanstvi, ples in petje, tako da ste vsi vabljeni tukaj malo bliže, spredaj, sedaj se bo zavesa odprla in po plesu seveda se pa ponovno slišimo. Hare Krishna.